minutes after two o'clock, the second and final hour of 702 Afternoons with myself, Rile Bukhile Mabuja. And I'm so looking forward to this one because we started the conversation a few weeks ago in these master classes as we'll be talking all things around property, home ownership, rentals. And uh, this is part two of this master class where we're talking about why home ownership is a journey and you're all able to go to primemediaplus.com or download the app to listen to part one where myself and our guest Porsche Lekape, head of product APSA Home Loans, uh, we're sharing our own personal journeys of um, home ownership and how the journey uh, continues. So we take your calls on 11 880702 SMS us 31702, tweet at Rile M at Radio 702 using the hashtag 702 Afternoons and the WhatsApp line 072 702 702 Masterclass this masterclass with myself, Rile Bukhile Mabuja, on 702 is brought to you by APSA Home Loans. T's and C's apply. APSA is an authorized financial services and registered credit provider, NCRC. P7. And we are back again for part two because, Portia, it is only right that we continue where we left off. If you weren't with us, we are talking about home ownership being a journey. Portia Lick Up, ahead of product, Absa Home Loans, joins us again for this conversation. Welcome back. Good to have you in studio again. Good afternoon, Rilevukhile. Thank you so much for having us again. Uh, and good afternoon to our listeners. Really looking forward uh, to the conversation this afternoon. If we are to summarize, you know, the first conversation we had, we were, we were chatting about um, home ownership being a journey, not just because of the 20-year marriage you now have with um, your, you know, financial services provider or credit provider, but also the things you learn along the way, the way the economy is changing and how the trends are changing, that you have people who own multiple properties, but the one they live in, they are renting. So times are changing. And I'm wondering from our last conversation, what are some of the things that were asked of you after being on air? Thanks, uh, So there were quite a few uh, questions that were posed to us through the different social media platforms. Um, I think one of the key ones that we got was around um, affordability, right? Mm. I remember there was a particular listener um, who asked to say, and actually, you know what was interesting, when I when I read that comment, it didn't sound like um, the listener was already in financial trouble. Mm. She was just afraid of losing her property. Mm. She was afraid of the unknown. She was saying, I just bought a property. I'm afraid that I may lose it, that it could be repossessed at some point in my life. And I think you and I spoke about the fact that it's a 20 year long commitment and one doesn't know what could happen in the next 20 years. Yes, definitely. And I think the fear for many is legitimate because we know there is a psychology behind finances in general. Yeah that people have different relationships with money, um, having been informed by their experiences, possibly their upbringing. Um, I mean, I know of people who are literally covered maybe for two more generations, but that fear is constantly there because they have clear memories of, you know, not having a, a place to call home, of being up and down while the family struggled or this very unstable childhood where it, it, it's, it's a constant living in survival mode. So those fears are legitimate. And I'm wondering, outside of the typical questions that are asked of, of us when you apply for a home loan, you know, it's the pay slips, it's the income, what are your expenses? What are the questions you would say we should ask ourselves when we start thinking about a home ownership journey that are deeper than just do I have enough in my bank account? Because, I mean, I'm thinking about the fact that earlier we were talking about people fantasizing about disappearing. Like, you can't disappear, you know, without a trace three years into your home loan. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, it, you know, it's so important to have that deep conversation with yourself around why am I starting this home ownership journey? Mm. Is it because 
I am feeling the peer pressure. Perhaps it's, you know, friends are starting to buy their first properties and I feel that I want to buy property as well. Mm -hmm. uh, people are posting on Instagram, you know, the key. Uh, and I also want a real or... <laughs> that thing is so much pressure because it's not just the key. The nails are done <laughs> and then... You can see the shampoo there, right. lady flowers that will come home. Ne? So it is a lot of pressure. I mean, I have a home, but I see those pictures and I'm also like, ooh, let me get Exactly. So it's the why am I wanting to buy this property? Yes. Um, and is it truly something that I want for myself? Uh, do I believe that it's the right time? Mm. Um, do I have other financial commitments? And, you know, financial commitments for some of us, it's not just debt that you have, maybe, you know, vehicle finance. Lending. It's also some financial responsibilities that you have mm. in your own household. Perhaps you're the breadwinner. Perhaps you need to take some of your uh, siblings uh, to school. They need to finish varsity. Maybe you need another two years. Yes. Right? Is it the right time for me to be making this uh, big financial commitment? Mm. Um, I think it starts there. Um, I think, you know, um, one should also, and you, know, you and I spoke about this last time to say, this thing of saying, I'm moving in silence. Uh, you know, I want to surprise everyone at the end of the day. It's not ideal, right? So am I having the right conversations with people close to me um, around, you know, I'm actually thinking of buying a property. Do you think it's the right time for yes. me, right? Um, and I think beyond that, you and I, um, you know, we spoke about the affordability side of it is, um, can I actually afford it? I mean, those are the typical financial questions that one would ask themselves, right? Can I afford it? Uh, do I have a deposit in place? Uh, if the bank does ask me to pay a deposit, deposit mm. um, how much is that deposit so as an example the bank could say we've approved you but we'd like for you to put down 10 percent deposit mm. on a million rand that's a hundred thousand rands do i have the hundred thousand rands saved some way if not and i'm going to be asking the bank to fund me beyond a hundred percent of my loan which is the additional funds for costs mm. as an example does my credit profile reflect low risk? So some of us don't even check our credit uh, bureau profiles. And from a uh, bureau perspective, we are all allowed to access our credit profiles at least once a year. Have I actually looked at my credit profile? What does my credit profile look like? Am I a high risk customer or mm. am I a low risk customer? Um, do I understand some of the costs that come with, you know, owning a property? Uh, mm. All those upfront costs we spoke about it are tiny costs, rate and taxes that you need to pay. Do I understand what, on average, uh, levies cost for mm. that particular area that I want to buy into? Uh, those are some of the questions that one would need to ask themselves. You know, as you were saying around, okay, the bank is asking for a deposit of, uh, do I have the hundred thousand? I was speaking to my sister-in-law this morning and she said to me when I was asking her for two million US dollars, fella. <laughs> and she said, you know, we have it, ne? but to access it, you need to pray. It's in heaven waiting. <laughs> <laughs> you all have that money. So now the question is how you get it from the prayers into your bank account. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we... I want to actually go through that list again that you've mentioned mm. because the biggest question about the why are you doing this is going to help a person answer the other questions because I sometimes find that people are overstretching themselves because now it's not just a house. It's a house like this. It's a this. And when you start to really do the investigating of what you do qualify for and the area you want to live in, and then you look at the budget and the houses, maybe it's not matching that picture with the shampopo and the keys. So when we come back, we continue with this conversation. 20 minutes after two o'clock, we're talking part two of why home ownership is a journey in this masterclass with the head of product, APSA Home Loans, Portia Ligabe. We'll take your calls on 011-883-0702 and the WhatsApp line 072-702-1702 as we speak about this home ownership journey and the things we need to consider. But let us go to the lines. We'll continue with our conversation on the big why and maybe you are sitting and asking yourself why because sometimes we've inherited the why from our parents 
of home ownership. We've inherited this, I must own my own home. But times are not what they used to be. T's and C's are not exactly the same. But let's go to the lines. Joe from Johannesburg. How are you doing, Joe? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Go ahead. Good, thank you. I've got a quick question for Portia. So I bought a property uh, about two years ago and I've got a cottage at the back and I'm thinking of putting it on Airbnb. I wanted to just get a view on that. If it's a good idea. Yeah, I wanted to just get a very high level overview or rather sort of a um, I feedback rather from here on my plan. Can I quickly just ask you a question, Joe? Um, sure. So you're saying you want to put a, 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 a cottage in the back of your property to create an Airbnb. Have you already Correct. done the homework as to how much it costs and, and, and what the city will allow in terms of building? I have. No, no. Well, it, it actually exists already. So I'm not building something new. Oh. It exists already. Yes. Okay. So in essence, what is it currently being used for at the moment? It's going to empty. How? This sounds simple. Portia, what would you like to advise, <laughs> Joe? He wants to know your thoughts. Absolutely. Uh, thanks a lot, Rilevokile. And good afternoon, Joe. Thanks for the question. Um, I do think that um, research is important, right? I think, um, you know, the need for you for, for you to start looking at using that uh, cottage uh, from a, an additional income perspective does sound like a good idea. Perhaps what you can do is do a bit of research. There are some organizations that have set themselves up, uh, you know, to talk to property investors uh, and share some great insights and experiences uh, in terms of what it takes to own an Airbnb, uh, what are some of the costs that you must think about in terms of being an Airbnb owner. You know, there's obviously some uh, fees that you pay from an Airbnb perspective, right? I do think also perhaps what you need to think about is the area that you want to set up this Airbnb in, right? Are there other Airbnbs around the area? Are you seeing a demand for Airbnbs in your particular area? Uh, But of course, from our perspective, uh, you know, we, it's, it is, this is not financial advice. I'm just giving you insight in terms of some of the things that you can sure. think about. But I would really yeah. recommend that you find communities. There are many communities of like-minded people like yourself uh, where they share mm-hmm. ideas and insights. Okay. No, thank you so much for that. Thanks, Leo. Oh. Thank you. All the best to you, Joe, with your Airbnb. And uh, I would even add to that to say, go and find out from Airbnb themselves with the frequently asked questions um, on if you do face challenges, what is the support going to be like? Because sometimes um, thinking about the money you could make is nice, but it might cost you more mentally, your peace of yeah. mind of the in and Correct. out and, and all of those things. So um, um, as Porsche already alluded to, there are groups where Airbnb owners chat to one another. Um, they they speak about the different T's and C's they've had to add to what they are doing just to protect themselves. Because at the end of the day, they can be damaged to your property what what happens Definitely. after that? How do you recover the funds and things like that? So I would say find out from Airbnb what kind of support systems are in place for non-tons tenants, <laughs> if I can put it that way. <laughs> non-tons Thank so tenants. Thank you so much, Joe in Johannesburg, for your question. Um, there There is um, a question here, and I'm not sure if it is in your jurisdiction to answer a portion, but it says, does the APSA brand have any intention of adding an Islamic home loan offering to the value proposition to customers to retain existing customers? Um, I've seen um, banks that have Islamic uh, 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 options as a whole. And I'll be honest, I still don't know why that is the case. Maybe you can enlighten us if, if, if you are aware of what that entails with this question of Islamic home loan offering. Absolutely. Thanks, Rile Ukhile. And just to go back to Joe's question, yes. um, there's a, um, a partner of ours called the South African Property Investor Network. Mm. Um, they're available through multiple social media platforms. They do talk about, uh, you know, property ownership from, a, from an investor perspective. So Airbnbs would be something that they would cover as well. So I would nice. encourage Joe to reach out to the team. Um, and then just coming back to the question around Islamic home loans, uh, mm. it is something that... Uh, 
uh, we are passionate about. I think as a bank, we do uh, offer Islamic banking products. Uh, at this point, uh, indeed, there is uh, you know work towards uh, us actually putting together a proposition from an Islamic banking perspective. Uh, we do appreciate the, the feedback uh, from an Islamic banking perspective. So um, Islamic banking, in essence, is meant to cater for the demand for alternatives to conventional banking with the core principles of Islamic banking being prohibition of interest, risk sharing, transparency, integrity, and social responsibility. So as you are saying, um, um, APSA is looking at those in the home loan space. Absolutely. We do have an Islamic banking uh, division. So mm -hmm. there is a team that looks after other products as well. Um, I think if uh, the listener can also reach out to the team, uh, perhaps there's uh, you know uh, products that they can offer uh, as an alternative. I have to ask a question because we did announce um, at the end of our first masterclass together that we're giving 5,000 rand every time we are together, every episode we are together for people to share their stories. And I thought this is a good time to remind why is um, sharing stories so important to EBSA? Why is it so important in this particular conversation? Thanks, Rile Bukhil. I think from a brand perspective, I think uh, our listeners would have seen that APSA really talks about um, the brand positioning that says your story matters. Mm. Uh, we want to hear every story uh, of each South African, uh, whether good or bad. Uh, you and I spoke about this, some of the learnings, some of the mistakes that you've made, how you've bounced back uh, from any challenges that you've seen along the way. What are those success stories that you want to share with others? Mm. Perhaps you uh, are listening to Joe who's talking about Airbnb and mm. you're thinking, oh, I wish I could tell Joe how I did it, yes. right? So please share your stories because from your stories we learn uh, from each other. Uh, and I think I'm really excited uh, to be giving away the first prize uh, to the story teller who shared their story uh, from the last episode oh could it be you could it be you are you my new best friend ka five thou <laughs> <laughs> i i am thinking about the fact that i mean um there are situations where life happens um is it abnormal i mean we spoke about this part of if you're going through a hectic time in life and you can actually pick up the phone to your bank and say listen this is what I'm going through. And you can discuss the options available to you. Don't wait for your house to now be in the process of repossession because mm -hmm. that's quite far down the line. So when we come back from news, I want to know what those options look like to alleviate the fears of the 20 years and all of those things. And maybe in that you can give us hypothetical scenarios to say, okay, if let's say Erleb Gile phones and I say, guys, um, I am struggling. I need a six-month break. Um, are those options available to me? I remember Unati Nkai sharing uh, the best advice that her father gave her, which was to always put a little bit extra into her mortgage. Um, and that's how she was able to survive for two years without an income because she had that extra sitting in there. And those tips we know are super, super helpful. So when we come back from the news, we continue with this masterclass. Your questions on 011-8830702 and the WhatsApp line 072-702-1702. Helping homeowners and aspiring homeowners. It's the masterclass with Relebo Gile Maboja on 702. And our masterclass at 20 minutes to 3 o'clock as we are chatting about why home ownership is a journey. This is part two. And we're joined again gracefully by the head of product, APSA Home Loans, Portia Likabe. Your questions on 011-8830702 and the WhatsApp line 0727021702. Let us go to the lines and then we come back to answer the question of what happens if you find yourself in a situation where you're in financial trouble, what options are available to you, but also the benefits of paying a little bit extra into that account of yours, your home loan account. We've got Samantha in, George. Samantha, how are you? Hi, Rile Bukhile. Hi, Pusha. Thank you so much for the show. Hope you're doing well. Um, I would like to also ask just for advice from your guests, but I quickly just want to share a story with what you said earlier 
um, about paying in a little bit extra. Yes. Um, I was in a fortunate position to be able, when I had, um, uh, I used to work as a, as a salesperson back in a few years ago, and I was able to, with every little incentive that you get, I would put in a little bit extra into mm. my, my mortgage bond. And it actually worked for me because at a certain point in time, I was able to actually withdraw some of that money when I was in need of it. Not all of it, but a little bit of that money I was able to um, withdraw for mm. whatever I needed at that time. So that's 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 a fabulous piece of advice and actually it does work but what i would like to ask your guests um if i've been i had i have my bond now for about seven years Mm. and i'm obviously cost of going up when is the right time to start having a discussion about interest rates Mm. um and asking your bank if they are able to reconsider lowering interest rates seeing that you've make payments you've been a good payer say like in, in you've been on good terms with your bank and you've been mm. making regular payments are you in a position after seven years where you still being um charged so high for interest mm. um are you able to ask if i can lower that interest rate mm. and I, so thank you so much samantha so in essence similar to the question i was asking is are you able to renegotiate the terms to have a conversation about interest rates and the one I was asking before is are you able to say guys go break <laughs> can we just temporarily separate to f- to f- see where we are in this relationship <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um really thank you and Samantha thank you so so much for sharing your story uh, I think there's probably someone listening to your story and thinking, I also get, you know, these incentives. I could actually, you know, put it towards my my home loan. Um, and I think you raise an important point, and I want to emphasize this again, mm. uh, that it is important to be comfortable with calling the bank. Uh, mm. The bank is always open to having a conversation. Uh, so to Samantha's question, who says, I've been paying my bond for seven years. Mm. I want to have a conversation with my bank around uh, reducing my interest rates. Can I? You can. Mm. You can call the bank and say, I've been looking at my interest rate and I feel like I'm paying a little bit too much. Is there room for negotiations? Uh, The banks are open to having that conversation. I think one of the things that I also need to emphasize is that banks want to keep their customers in their homes. So my colleague, Mbuisa Lokumalo, mm. who will be joining uh, on the 31st of July, will also be talking about, uh, you know, distressed customers when you feel like you can't afford your bond anymore. Mm. What are some of the options that are available to you? I do think that when you do have the conversation with the bank, uh, also perhaps have the ability to illustrate that you have been a good payer. I think to Samantha's point, if you have been paying your bond well, uh, you know, there is a conversation that you have. If you've got an extra uh, lump sum that you want to put towards your Mm. bond to reduce the exposure. So let's say your outstanding balance is a million and you've got 100,000 rands that you want to put down, mm. uh, you, are ex- you are reducing the bank's exposure, right? So the bank could have, you know, an alternative uh, from an interest rate uh, charge perspective. Um, also, if you do make those additional payments, I think Samantha was saying in her case, she did end up withdrawing the funds. Mm. Perhaps consider capitalizing those funds. Right. Mm. Capitalizing means that you actually s- say to the bank, I don't want to access these funds anymore reduce my current outstanding Mm. balance, meaning that you're actually reducing Mm -hmm. um, your exposure from a bank perspective. What it then does is that it reduces your monthly repayment as Mm. well. Remember, what we do as banks is that we charge you interest on your outstanding balance. Mm. So every time you reduce your outstanding balance, your interest charges also reduce over time. Mm. And I think what you are, are alluding to, which is very, very important is, Call the bank, have a conversation, but it does help if you've been playing your part as well because it's going to be very difficult to be coming, trying to negotiate or have a conversation if you are not playing your part. Now again, you're like, ah, guys, please, uh, if there is pushback, that can't be something that is not expected. We're going to take another break, and I still see more of your questions coming through on 0727021702, or give us a call, 011-883-0702. 11 minutes to 3 o'clock as we prepare to wrap up this masterclass as we are 
talking part two of why home ownership is a journey with head of product APSA Home Loans, Porsche Leklape. Your calls on Audible one double eight three zero seven zero two in the WhatsApp line zero seven two seven zero two one seven zero two. Um, we were asking the question. I mean, we, you 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 mentioned that pouring a little bit extra into your home loan has so many uh, benefits. Um, can a can a client choose if they want the benefits to be lowering the interest, lowering the monthly repayments, or shortening the term? Thanks, really well clear. So, I think let me put it this way. Um, so let's let me take an example. So you've got a million rand uh, property, mm-hmm. you're paying uh, prime. Um, over 20 years, you decide that, you know what, I've got an extra 500 rands that I can pay towards my bond, which you mm. can. Every month, you can put in an extra 500. Mm. Uh, instead of the bank, you know, deducting a minimum installment amount, you could say to the bank, please deduct X amount from my bank account, right? So let's assume interest rates don't change over time. You will be able to reduce um, the term of your loan mm. by at least three, four years, meaning that you'll pay off your bond uh, within, let's say, 16 years, as an example. Yes. Right? Um, And remember what I did say is that the trick here is that do not withdraw Mm -hmm. uh, because when you withdraw the money, you're taking your outstanding balance back up and we will charge you. where it was. Exactly. And then you undo. Right. Yes. So then the second benefit then is in knowing that you're making these additional payments, you pay less from an interest charge perspective. So you pay obviously towards the 1 million rand that you borrowed from the bank, and then the bank charges you uh, interest charges, right? Mm. You could, you will, not could, you will save on interest charges Mm. as well, right? Mm. From an interest rate perspective, this is where now you are able to call the bank and have a conversation. Mm. So the interest rate that you agree on, and that's why I think you and I had the conversation to say, negotiate your rate yes. at the beginning uh, and illustrate to the bank why you will not be a high risk customer yes. whether it's i'm going to be putting down a deposit of 10 percent of 20 or 20 percent uh, i bring a transactional account as well meaning that uh, and my debit order will be running off the account how do you, my credit uh, record is clean i've got a credit score of x therefore i'm a low risk customer yes um Doing that upfront negotiation helps because then you don't have to come back later and negotiate further and yes. illustrate even further why you're not posing risk to the bank. But ultimately, if you do find yourself in a situation where you want to have a conversation around a rate reduction, um, you can. All right. There's a question that's come through here that uh, reads as follows before we go to the voice notes on 072 702 And it says, afternoon, I recently bought... Apologies. Good afternoon, Lebrel and team. Please ask your guest. We have been paying a bond for 12 years and are looking into selling this house and buying a bigger home. Will that be advisable? Obviously, we'll have to pay off the balance on the bond and we are planning on putting a 300K as a down payment. We'll really love your advice from Busisiwe and Dobsonville. I think we may have to use a hypothetical again, not knowing all of the details. So let's assume they say, They are saying they've paid a bond for 12 years. So let's assume they are paying it exactly as they're supposed to. They've technically got eight years left. So roughly um, that's about 40% to go. Um, But now they're looking at upgrading, which many people find themselves in the situation where you're not done with the one bond, but you want to um, go into another property. Absolutely. Thanks, Rile uh, Bukhile. And thank you to Busisiwe from Dobsonville for that question. Really appreciate it. And congratulations on how far you've come uh, around paying your, your home loan. I think 12 years is quite commendable. Um, I think the, the decision to upgrade your property obviously depends on your unique uh, situation. Um, so just looking at uh, Busisiwe's question, Rile uh, Bukhile, it mm. 12 years is long enough for the value of the property that they're living in to have appreciated in value, right? So let's assume they bought the property at a million and over time, now the market price for that property is sitting at 1.4 million, meaning that, you know, the properties that look very similar within the same area, same characteristics, uh, are now selling at around 1.4 million. It means that they would have made 
profit of about 400,000 yes. rands, right? So that's what you and I spoke about the last time where we were saying it's actually equity, right? Yes. So if Wusisiwe is to be able to sell the property that she has at 1.4 million, mm. then it means that she's got that 400,000 rands uh profit if you look at it yes. uh, in terms of the sale price but obviously that takes into account the outstanding balance how much would she have to settle the remaining uh, amount that she owes to the mm. bank and what would be the profit uh, take into account uh, the commission from a state agent's perspective so remember state agents would also charge you commission mm. um, and I think one of the things that we always uh, don't talk about, and I think I want to mention it to Busisi as well, is when you do sell a property, do understand that it comes with costs as well, yes. right? So um, one of the costs that I think uh, I want our listeners to also be mindful of is that when you do want to cancel your bond uh, or, or sell your property, you do need to inform your bank mm. that mm. I'm intending to cancel this bond, uh, you know, you give a notice to cancel. Uh, we give about three months, 90 days. And please clarify when you say canceling the bond, yeah. right? What does that mean? Because does canceling a bond mean we're canceling this contract? Because maybe the person is not saying we're paying up. When you call your bank mm -hmm. and say, I want to cancel my bond, what are they hearing you say? Yes, that's a good question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because uh, I hear this question quite a lot. So there's two parts, right? Yes. There is, I'm cancelling my bond or I'm, I'm, I'm paying off my bond. Yes. So paying off my bond means that I had 200,000 rands outstanding balance on my home loan. Uh, I've gotten a, a big bonus. Yes. And I want to pay this bonus into my bond. I think Samantha gave uh, that example earlier to say if you've got a little extra money and you paid into your home loan, meaning now that your outstanding balance is now at a zero, mm. right? It is not cancelled. Your, your, your home loan account sits at a zero balance. Mm. To cancel your bond, you need to inform the bank that you are ready to cancel your bond, meaning that you want possession of your title deeds. Oh, I got you, yes. Right? So what the bank will then do is they will instruct a cancelling uh, attorney, cancellation attorney. Uh, they will also charge, and this is important because mm -hmm. I know a lot of our listeners and our customers um, are not prepared for this charge when they cancel their bond. Um, there is a cancellation fee that you pay to the to the cancellation attorney mm. because the cancellation attorney is going to go to the deeds office mm. and cancel the bond under the bank's name and transfer, make sure that that bond is no longer under the bank's name, it's yes. under your name. And then the bank will then release your title deeds, which you can then, you know, put at home or put in a safe somewhere. That's when the bond is actually canceled. We've run out of time. I don't know how this keeps happening to us, Portia, but it is always <laughs> a pleasure being with you and getting the advice. And indeed, um, home ownership is a journey. So make sure uh, you head over uh, to apsa.co.za where you're able to explore. And there's an icon, loans, and you can get all the information. Again, don't be afraid to have a conversation with your bank. Uh, thank you again, Portia, for coming through. Now, thank you to all of you uh, for tuning into the 702 Masterclass brought to you by Absa Home Loans. Come back every first and last Wednesday of the month for more conversations with property industry experts guiding you on the next chapter of your home ownership story. Whether you find yourself on the journey, wherever you find yourself on this journey, go to the 702 Facebook page and X pages as well to share what your home ownership experience has been or what you want to write in the next chapter of your home ownership story. And you could win a cash prize of 5,000 Rand. APSA Home Loans is committed to housing the nation and to empowering Africa's tomorrow together. One ownership story at a time. Your story matters. APSA, T's and C's apply. APSA is an authorized financial services and registered credit provider, NCRCP7. Ooh.